Hello, I am Liffy and welcome to another Planty video. Today I'm going to be doing like a watering 101, I guess. Uh, a guide to watering your plants. <laughs> now full disclosure, this is based off of my personal experience with my plants in my house. So again, it will be different for everyone, but these are kind of things that I use to work out when a plant needs watering, how much to water, etc, etc. So without further ado, here we go, Watering 101. Oh yes, importantly, so I know people watch this from all over the world. I live in Cape Town, South Africa. <laughs> I don't know what zone that is. We don't use zones. Um, it's warm. <laughs> it's Africa. It's hot here. Uh, we have a dry uh, summer season, a wet winter season. Quite humid, not massively humid. I don't know that's just a summary of our weather so that's to kind of tell you like what conditions I'm working with when I talk about like how I water my plants so watering you're gonna need one of these well actually no you don't you can use whatever you want you can use this for all you care as long as you can put water in it then um you sort it the question that I get asked a lot is how do I know when to water my plants and I know people like a watering routine like I water every Sunday, I water every second Sunday, and I would personally advise against using a watering routine. This is because all of your plants will have different watering requirements, depending on what they are, where they are in your house, things like that. So, oh, the size pot they're in. You know, something in a small pot's gonna dry out way faster than something in a big pot. So there's a lot of factors that go into determining when your plant's actually gonna need watering. So having a set watering schedule will actually potentially increase the risk of you overwatering some of your plants and causing root rot and other issues like fungus gnats and things and uh, we don't wanna be dealing with those. So maybe number one, you're gonna have to maybe be a bit more on top of it. If watering, if you have a watering routine that works for you, that's fine. For me, I don't know, I can't really deal with it. Personally because, say for example, this is my studio, it's got a plastic roof, it's hot in here. So I have to water plants in here more often than I have to do, say, in other rooms in the house that are a normal room with normal windows and aren't basically a greenhouse. So, so a few tips and tricks you can use to work out when your plants need watering. The first one is some of your plants will show you, which is very handy. Not all plants. Well, all plants will eventually, they all go a little bit like wilty and sad, like you do when you're thirsty. But some are very obvious. So I've been abusing a couple of plants to show you what that looks like. So this first one would be a syndapsis. So this is an exotica. Now you can tell this needs watering because the leaves are all curled in on themselves. So yeah, you can see here how curly and almost like rolled in on themselves all of the leaves are like underneath here. Super rolly. These ones are, that's a good one. So this plant is begging for some water. Once you see leaves start to roll and you know, you've got to do a proper water. Peace lilies, another really good example. Wilting. Now, I would say peace lilies are one of the most obvious to know when they need a water. This, <laughs> it's very much screaming <laughs> for some water. So if you see that flopping, you know it's time. And again, not to just give it like a little like, No, but we'll come to that. Another thing you can look for on your more kind of succulent, chunkier leaves. Um, some of them more waxy as well. So for example, this peperomia. This peperomia really needs water, so it really needs a clean. But you can touch the leaves and they won't feel as solid as they normally do. And also, gently, <laughs> you can uh, do a little squish and that squishes so easily. When the plant cells are turgid and full of water, you will have real resistance to that. You'll you'll only be able to sort of do that and there won't be this massive, uh, I think it's the, the taco effect. Is it Nick? Nick? Oh, I can't remember your surname. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> but the taco test, I find it really useful for um, succulent type plants. So for example, this peperomia desperately needs some water. Other ways to see that your plants need watering, and again, I'm gonna use these plants as an example throughout, the pot will feel really light. So this weighs virtually nothing. A plant that is well watered 
you'll pick it up and you will be able to feel that there's moisture being retained in the soil that it's planted in. So if you wanna just do a quick like, oh, what needs water? You can lift up your pots and if there is any kind of weight, maybe the weight, well, this is bone dry and I can feel that, like this pot weighs absolutely nothing. So check the weight of your pot. Do it again after you've watered it and you'll see the difference. So you'll be able to sort of gain uh, understanding, see a trend over time of like what a heavy pot weighs versus what a, what a desperately thirsty pot weighs. Moisture meter. Moisture meter is really handy. Um, I used to use this a lot. I don't really use it anymore. I'm very much a kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna water when I feel like it kind of person now. But in the beginning, especially when I was keeping more fussy plants, moisture meter. So all you do, take this bad boy. Again, let's use this very sad plant as an example. And you don't just put it in a little bit. You wanna dig it in quite deep down into the center of the root ball. Oh yeah, look how dry that is. <laughs> so that's telling you this guy needs water. Uh, let me have a look, quickly see anyone I've watered recently and we'll try it out to show you what it looks like when you water the plant. Okay, let's see on this philodendron tortum. I watered this this morning. There we go. Can you see? There we go, wet. So wet is it going to be right after you've watered. Your kind of happy zone is your middle, what is this called? Moist. And then you're starting to veer into, oh, maybe I should water it when it's dry. I'm a big fan of underwatering as opposed to overwatering plants. I feel like your plants can survive on underwatering. Possibly unpopular opinion. I'd rather underwater than overwater. Easier to fix underwatering than it is to fix overwatering. Just put it back and I've realized I need to show you it again. If you don't have a moisture meter, fear not, you don't need one. You have a finger. All you need to do, take your finger, stick it in, into the soil. The soil is wet. If you don't like putting your fingers in, you can use a chopstick, anything like that. Um, but if you stick your finger in relatively deep, you can't just do it in the surface. Everyone talks about the top inch. I would put it a little bit deeper if you can. So get in there, there you go wet soil as opposed to this poor sad boy look how dry that is so it's just dusty so when in doubt shove your finger in the soil that will really help now types of watering and how to water i personally am a big fan of waiting a longer period between waterings and then doing a big flush watering a flush watering is basically where you water and you see water running out the bottom of the pot. I'll put B-roll in of me doing it <laughs> so you can see. Um, normally people will do that and they'll wait for it to flush and then they'll stop. That's not gonna saturate the whole soil. That's gonna have the water go in, go around the sides and start to soak in around this bit, the edge of the pot. But it's not actually gonna reach all of the soil. So you're gonna wanna sit there and water it for a while. It's all soaking up, uh, especially if you have a perlite mix, you'll notice the soil will actually maybe like go up a little bit to the rim, a little bit, let it all go through, a little bit more, ah, there you go. That's a solidly watered plant. I know the general way that people water, and to be honest I do sometimes, is you just walk around your house with a watering can and you kind of like top up, top up, top up. Totally acceptable way to do it, but again you're just going to need to keep an eye on when you did it so that you're not perhaps uh, giving them too much too often and it's not going to give the plants the watering that they need so yeah it works it's how like I did it growing up how my mum did it my gran did it and their plants survived so it works but you're not gonna have the happiest plants that way the last option is bottom watering now bottom watering I can't talk too much on because I haven't done a massive amount of it but what it is basically is you fill a container a sink a bath, a tub, whatever, full of water, and you place your pots inside. So this one is a good example, she says, breaking everything on the desk, because drainage holes. So you will fill up your container with water, pot in, and it will soak up through the bottom. 
as opposed to through the top. How long this takes is variable. It can be really quick. I know when I've done it before with some plants, the water is filled up really quickly, mostly on smaller ones. So for example, this is a very small pot. So this will soak up water pretty quickly. This is a much larger pot. You might need to leave it in for like an hour, go and do something, come back. And once the water has saturated up to the top of the soil, then you know that your plant is watered enough. That is my understanding of bottom watering. Again, I don't do it, so I don't want to speak to it, but I know of it. So that is an option. I would suggest maybe looking at other YouTubers who specialize in bottom watering if that's something that you like. Um, can be good for space constraints if you have a bath. I'm lucky enough to have outside, which is why I do flush watering, because I can just sit there with the hose and just... So I think that's it. I think that's watering 101. So summarizing, pots are light, they need a water. Pots are heavy, they don't need a water. Uh, soil is wet when you stick something in it. Don't water, soil is dry, water it. Uh, give it a bit more water than you think, but water less often than you think. That would be my number one takeaway from this is more water less often. Oh wait, I wanna show you something. <laughs> okay, I know this is a shameless plug, but I actually don't care. <laughs> A friend and I made a book, <laughs> so it's a plant care tracker. So basically all you are gonna need to do is if you're like me and you're scatty, each month we've worked out like what you need to do. There's tick boxes and you can tick like which days you've watered, which days you've fertilized, which days you've cleaned and keep track. And if you're like me, you do it and then you forget to put it in your phone and you're not sure what's happening. So this way, your book, you can keep track of it. So there you go, <laughs> shameless plug link below. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful and perhaps helped you with some of your watering questions. If you have any more questions, ask them below in the comments and um, I'll chat to you guys soon. In the meantime, stay safe and uh, go water your pots, I guess. <laughs> Bye.